Hi, this is Tony O'Driscoll. Today I'd like to spend 10 minutes sharing with you my concept on the notion of webvolution, the evolution of the internet from web 1.0 to web 2.0 to 3DI. Um, a lot of people, Henry Jenkins most notably, caution about uh, continuum models. I want to be clear that I'm not suggesting that web 1.0 or web 2.0 will ever disappear. I'm just now suggesting that web 3DI provides some new value propositions that heretofore could not have been achieved on the other two platforms. Uh, in Web 1.0, the value propositions were really around access and find. Uh, in the read-only web, the notion of being able to access centralized content such as banking content or stock brokerage content or HR benefits content was one of the big value propositions for Web 1.0 and the universal browser that Mark Andreessen came up with. As soon as more and more content was made accessible through that channel, the need to find content because of the volume of content became very important, and that's where... Uh, organ companies like Google and Yahoo emerged. One of the tipping points, I believe, uh, in moving from Web 1.0 to 2.0 was actually back in the Napster revolution where Sean Fanning and company came up with a peer-to-peer -peer networking technology that basically undermined the recording industry's business model of pay for CD. And that's where we started to see the first inklings of the read-only web becoming a read-write web through sharing and peer-to-peer -peer networking. That then has ushered in the MySpace and Facebook and SciWorld generation uh, of teenagers who actually spend uh, an inordinate amount of time reading and writing within their personal spaces on the web, be it Facebook or MySpace. Web 1.0 was really about the democratization of access. Web 2.0 is really about the democratization of participation. Now, the tipping point from 2.0 to 3.0 is really uh, the notion of collaboration. And the poster child for that there is really uh, Linux and Wikipedia, I think, are the two examples. I have the poster children here along, along the bottom. What you hear here, what you can see with Wikipedia is a number of people convening to co-create a product called a dictionary. And we know that there have been studies done where Wikipedia is, you know, I think it's 4.1 errors per thousand as opposed to Britannica's 3.9 errors per thousand. The closer you get to current time, however, Wikipedia does become more accurate. And what you have is essentially, you know, uh, Sarah Wiki's notion of the wisdom of crowds being applied to a product, a document that is a dictionary that many of us use today. So that's the notion of collaborative co-creation that Jimmy Wales speaks about a lot. When we move into 3DI, however, that, that collaborative co-creation isn't limited only to uh, a flat 2D space where we're dealing with products such as documents. We now can get into co-creation of content that is three-dimensional inside of platforms like Second Life or Big World, and that content in and of itself has uh, economic value. This, I believe, will unleash a whole new realm of uh, innovation and economic uh, value within the world. If, I, if I'm going to go to the, the next component of the animation, we want to talk about platforms. You know, in Web 1.0, value was derived through the platforms of access, and you were charged transaction fees either for brokerage or for looking at your account and things like that. And then clearly, with, with the arrival of Yahoo and eBay and Amazon, uh, a commerce platform was built upon which you could you could transact, you know, fungible currency, if you will, for content. And that commerce platform remains through today. When we get into Web 2.0, however, um, the, the platforms are starting to change in nature, and it's very interesting to think about. First, there's reputation platforms. So if you're a good Amazoner or you're a good eBayer and you've got a five-star rating, that might allow you to command a higher price. Similarly, if you are um, a well-known blogger and people want to get some some space on your on your um, site, that is also a way to kind of monetize your reputation. So referral and referral platforms it takes that to the next level that says, you know, if, if you are um, a well-known blogger and you have a place, you can you can have a referral platform that ties back into Google's AdSense or ties back into products on eBay, and, and you can essentially get referral fees for passing people through your space in cyberspace uh, and pick up money that way. And then obviously the search platform and Google's Google's whole notion of you know contextually relevant advertising based on search inquiry, uh, I think the story is pretty clear and people understand how that platform works. So, what does this all mean as we move forward? Clearly, there are participation platforms when we get into 3DI where you you can pay money so that you can be a landholder in places like Second Life. 
the other thing about Second Life I think that's absolutely critical is the fact that the creation platform is embedded within the world. In other words, you don't have to go anywhere to create something. Uh, just like Ansi Chung is the first millionaire in Second Life, she had the ability to create real estate and then create, get armies of people to help her create real estate, develop real estate and sell it to people who are too lazy to work with prims themselves and turn that into a million dollar uh, real real revenue for her in the real world. So the alternate currency platform and the exchange fees from places like IDG that allow you to take your Linden dollars and, and transfer it back into U.S. dollars is also a, com a very important platform. So the key message of this chart is we are evolving from 1.0 to 2.0 to 3DI. 1.0 and 2.0 will never go away. 3DI adds a layer of opportunity in the innovation space uh, that will drive new creation, new productivity that has a, an economic underpinning all of its own and upon which these platforms uh, become enablement factors to allow individuals to create value. Now, as we think about these platforms, an interesting uh, concept is what it's actually doing to the, to, to the underlying socio-technical structure, if you will. Uh, Carl Schramm coined the term entrepreneurial capitalism, and it, it certainly did inform a lot of the thinking going on in this chart. But essentially in Web 1.0, we, we have this notion of the enterprise, and we have this notion of employees who worked for those enterprises. We have the notion of the enterprise and the employees working together to create products and services that would add value in the market, and that the enterprise's job was to control the human resources and technical resources and intellectual capital and process capital that they had at their disposal to be more competitive in creating uh, productive are to creating products and services that differentiated them in the marketplace. Now, as you think about these uh, other platforms, what we're what we're seeing is, you know, from a demographic perspective, that young people today uh, are no longer kind of uh, have affinity for the enterprise; they have affinity for the endeavor. And where they happen to work is more a function of the fact that they get to engage in the endeavor that they're interested in. Uh, employees today uh, are tending to want to be a lot more entrepreneurial. And organizations today are trying to look for growth, and growth really comes from providing value on top of transfer platforms. What do I mean by that? If you look at eBay, for instance, uh, 750,000 people in the United States generate their primary or secondary income from eBay. Uh, eBay provides a platform. It's essentially a, a worldwide yard sale platform with the economic transfer mechanism built in that can allow one person's trash to be someone else's treasure and the, the search costs of that to be minimized. And because of the volume of people who, who work on the eBay platform, there's the opportunity for, um, for connections to be made. So the interesting thing about that model is that in eBay, the 750,000 people who are generating revenue uh, or income don't work for eBay, but they are uh, users of the platform. And eBay derives benefit by being a platform provider and also uh, is motivated to make sure that that platform is the best it can be because that's the way they make money is by attracting people to want to use the platform. So if we start to think about the enterprise not as uh, an environment that can commands and control resources, but as a creator of a platform that attracts individuals around endeavors that they want to be entrepreneurial around and that the monetizing system is set up in such a way that everybody wins, then you start to think about a different kind of world. You start to think about a world where there might be a billion one-person enterprises all interconnected through Web 2.0 and ultimately Web 3DI technology, and where the ultimate value proposition of the multinational or maybe the globally integrated enterprise of the past would not be to control resources, but to, be, to orchestrate uh, and coordinate the resource around the value proposition in order to very quickly identify and capture market value. So we see uh, with the evolution, or web evolution, as I like to call it, from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 to Web 3TI, being truly disruptive in terms of how we might conceive of the notion of the future of enterprise, what the future of leadership within those enterprises looks like, what the future of collaboration within and across the firewall might look like, and what the very notion of enterprise itself means. So there you have it, 10 minutes on Web3DI. I hope the thoughts prove useful and that they help you advance your own 3D Internet strategy.